Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to do part two of this vector graphics style animation. All right, so I'm delighted to say that we are now going to take our car toy rig and actually put it into action, okay? Uh, if you have not seen last week's video, please take a look at that on how to build the actual toy car rig and then come back to this video and we'll put it in its paces here. If, uh, if you need a link to that, the link is in the description below. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composite shot and I'm only going to make it 10 seconds long. Okay. Clicking okay. I'm going to go ahead under new layer, add a camera. Right, and what I want to do is, is I want to take my camera and I want to raise it up a little bit, maybe 250. I'm going to come forward about 500. I'm going to tip this down maybe 25 degrees so that I can see this red line, okay? Now, what I want to do is, is I want it to actually animate over a period of 10 seconds. I'm going to look at a top view of this. If I kind of scroll out using my mouse wheel, I can see where the camera is. If I move it to about negative 1,000, okay. Whoop, sorry, let me try that again. Negative 1,000. Okay. Yeah. And I keyframe it. I'm adding a keyframe for that position. If I go to the end of my timeline by hitting the end key on my keyboard, I can move this. And I'm just going to hold the control down like I did last week and... Flip the sign of that so now it's there. Okay, so now I have a situation where the camera is just riding along over this space, okay, of uh, the, the three-dimensional plane here, the three-dimensional environment. And if I go back to uh, my camera view, you can see it's just sort of, you know, watching along, okay? All right, back to a top view. What I want to do is, is I want to create a point that is going to represent where the car uh, or the toy car is and that point new layer point make it into 3d is going to be called the position okay which uh, makes perfect sense does it not all right uh, and it is going to essentially do the same thing the camera is doing I'm going to start by putting it at negative 1000 and I'm going to keyframe it. I'm going to go to the end, hitting my end key and using the control key, I'm going to flip the sign on that. And so now the camera and the point are moving together. Okay. And I'm just going to go back to a camera view and you can see that the camera is basically watching that point as it moves across the plane. Okay. All right. Now I have to tell you that uh, if you zoom in here a little bit, this actually isn't at the exact 10 second mark. So I'm just going to slide it back one. Okay. So that it is at the 10 second mark. And if I go to the exact five second mark, then you'll see it's at zero, 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 right? Which makes sense. At this point, I want to create another keyframe. Okay. So that I have something to play with. And all I'm going to do, this is just for an example purpose is I'm going to open this back up. Okay. And this keyframe has little handles that I can drag around. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drag these handles so that the, the actual point is making, is doing something interesting. Okay. Uh, and that way it doesn't look like it's just driving along. So now if we look at the active camera view and you can see that the dots here that represent the path of the keyframe, you can see how that it is driving and moving and dodging and weaving and that kind of stuff, okay? But here's the problem. It's always pointing in the same direction. And in real life, of course, it would turn as it was going down its road or its path, right? So how do you get it to turn? Well, basically what you need to do is you need it to point towards a future place in the line that it's going. Does that make sense? Because So if it's going to go that way, it needs to point that way, right? So how do I get a future point in the line? Well, it's really simple. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to right-click on that and say duplicate, okay? And I'm going to rename this a line. I could rename it future or whatever. Okay? And if I grab this and I just drag it to the left a little bit, maybe five frames, okay, you can see that I've slid it over. But now I have these two points 
one that is in front of the other on the same path, okay? And all I have to do now is take my position point under controls, layer properties, alignment, say align it towards a layer, and I want you to point towards that other point. So now you can see how that point turns as if it's driving down the road, okay? So that's pretty much it. Now we would bring in our car rig, okay? Now the thing about it is, is that if I bring in the car rig, it will really slow down my computer because it's drawing all those lines, okay? But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead before I do that and build my anim or my, my environment that the car is going to be driving through, okay? So I'm gonna start by creating a new plane layer. Click OK, I'm gonna take it down to the bottom and I'm gonna rename this the ground, okay? Or you could rename it whatever you want, all right? I'm gonna make it 3D, okay? And I'm gonna go to a top view so you can see it and there it is, it's sitting in front of everything. If I open it up and I, under transform properties, I rotate the X axis 90 degrees, it's sort of flat now, okay? And you can see that it's pretty big, not quite big enough, so I'm just gonna grab a corner and holding down my shift key, I'm going to expand it maybe a little bit more. It doesn't have to be a lot. Eh, you know, maybe 130, okay? All right, what I wanna do is under the effects, search for the grid effect because that is going to be my, um, you know, environment. I can go ahead and turn off my planes for a second so I can see the grid. Now this grid is way too big for what I want to use at the moment. So what I'm going to do is open it up under the point one, I'll make this about negative five by negative five or so, okay. And then uh, under point two, I think I'll make this about 15 by 15, okay. Under the border radius, I'll take it down to about one so that we have a nice grid effect. I think I wanna change the color to be that beautiful blue, okay? And so now I have this ground plane that my point is just driving along, okay? Now, how do I create my craters and my stuff like that? Well, what I need to do is build a map that's going to draw those craters for me, okay? So I'm gonna take my ground plane and use it. I'm just gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna rename it map. And what I wanna do is just remove the grid effect, okay? Uh, but I do wanna make it its own composite shot because otherwise it won't work to do what I wanna do, which is use a parallax effect sourcing this map. So I'm gonna right click on the map and say make into its own composite shot and just bring it over. So now I'm gonna add a fractal noise. I could add any picture I want here, but I'm gonna use a fractal noise because it'll be simple enough, okay? And before I go any further, I'm gonna just show you how this is going to affect it. You can see the fractal noise effect there. If I turn that off and I go ahead and I add a parallax effect, a parallax effect to the ground, okay? And I open this up and I source as the height map, the map, then you can see how it has this sort of undulations, okay? And the more stark and contrasting the map is, so say for example, I were to open up the appearance and just up the off of the exposure, maybe drop the offset, so it's a little more of a contrast, then you can see that a bigger undulation it will be. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the exposure completely, and then I'm really gonna take the offset down so I just have some patches of, uh, you know, of white here. And when you come back, you'll see that they're like caverns, okay? They're deep caverns here within the, uh, you know, within my ground plane. So now if you're looking at the point, you can see, well, it looks really cool, but the problem is, is that it's driving through those caverns. And if I look at the top view of this, right, you can see the caverns and you can see that if I turn on and off the map, that they're specifically, uh, designed or they're they're highlighted by the actual uh, map itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cheat uh, which is what i usually do and i'm just going to take this point i'm going to drag it down here i'm going to take this point the uh i'm going to have to grab it because it's going to be hard to get to because it's dead center in the middle naturally uh, the position point i'm going to go ahead and delete the align point because um, i'm going to have to rebuild that anyway 
Let me grab that point and just move it a little bit. Okay, whoops, I did not want to do that. I want to put this here, and I just want to move that point a little bit so that I can actually get to it. I'm going to move it over here, maybe, and I'm just going to adjust these handles so that it's flying through here. I think I'll come up here like this, or perhaps maybe even down. Let me grab this handle and do this. Yeah, something like that. So now we have this point driving through the caverns, right? And after a little bit more uh, tweaking, I've come to here. What I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to go ahead and recreate my align point. So I'm going to right click on the position just like I did before, duplicate it. And using my F2, I'm going to rename it align. I'm going to drag that align point forward about five frames or so, just like I did before. And then the position point, I'm going to align towards a layer. Uh-oh, that's not going to work. It says invalid, and that is really not going to be happy. Uh, oh, and now it's aligned. Okay, good. All right, so now if you're looking at my position point, you can see that it is, in fact, turning with the... Uh, environment or turning towards the uh, the path that it needs to be and so now if I go and I re uh, go back to my active camera and I turn on the ground plane you can see now that my align point is now traveling along the path not my line point but my ground uh, my uh, position point my bad is traveling along the path and turning as it needs to turn, right? So now all I have to do is insert my car. Well, that'll be the easy part. I'm gonna go ahead under media, import, and I'm going to say import a composite shot. Bring it in, and then you'll find the car, car toy rig right here. If I open this up, I can grab everything except, of course, for the camera and the camera control. I'm gonna control C, copy it on my PC, come back to my main sh composite shot and control V, paste it all in here. Okay, and then I find the master control point and I say parent that to my position point. And if I open everything up, I can go ahead and zero out these transform property positions. And the first thing you'll notice is, whoo, it's way too big. So all I need to do is scale this way down. I'm going to scale it down to about 5%. And you can see, there it is. The lines are a little bit big, I think. So probably what I would want to do is just go through um, the car lines plane and actually make an adjustment on those. Okay. And I kind of was afraid I was going to have to do that before, right? The easiest way to do that is to find width of the core, width of the core, and maybe I'll take it down to 50%. I'll just go through and do all those. And now I have this. All right, now... Um, I had, do have a couple of things that I want to say about this. One is, is that the reason I'm using the light sword effect on the lines is because as the um, points move further away from the camera in Z space, the light sword actually creates perspective. In other words, they get smaller the further they go away. They get bigger the closer they are to the camera. Okay. Also... Oh, I like how that slides. Um, also, if you want to add a, uh, a, a kind of a pop and a glow maybe to the uh, to the environment or the grid itself, what you'd want to do is light that. So I would create a new light, uh, but you would want to take that light and put it way high up, um, you know, so that it basically lights everything, okay? Uh, and everything is lit so that way... Uh, you know, it, it has that vector graphic feel. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.